Hey guys, happy homebrew Wednesday. So I'm here brewing my uh, my Hefeweizen, which I'm calling Tradition Tradition. And if you get that reference from one of my favorite Jewish folk movies, then uh, you'll recognize it. It keys in with the tradition of the Rhein Hatzgebot brewing of German beers. So I'm here collecting my last of the 11 pre-boiled gallons um, which I had to because I'm doing a five gallon traditional uh, Hefeweizen and a three gallon one a three gallon um, a three gallon batch that I will uh, that I plan on dry hopping so uh, because I, I'm not going to be able to get an accurate pre-boil gravity uh, because I can't put 11 gallons in my pot, um, I'm just gonna try to like blend them and then, you know, and boil eight gallons in my main pot, and uh, and th the three gallons I'll try to do a split between two other smaller pots so I don't have too much boilovers from all the wheat. So uh, we're just about, as you see, at the ga 11 gallon mark and at about almost at a little at one point towards the end of this I before I started filming I did take a refractometer reading and it was at like 10 10 10 12 maybe even 10 13 um, so it's not you know it's not like I'm pulling off too much readings so I'm just gonna get here to exactly the gallon mark because it does get up really high maybe in a little tiny bit extra and then I'm gonna go on with the blending, like I'm blending beers or blending sour beers. Uh, so the reason I did it this way with all the blending is for hop utilization, number one. Even though I'm only going to be making this beer 15 IBUs or 14 IBUs as per the style guidelines, um, it's so important that the wort is of similar concentration so that you get, you know, a somewhat equal hop utilization. And also, as I said earlier, I'm not going to be, a, I couldn't have taken an accurate pre boil gravity um, due to my lack of a 15 gallon pot. So, therefore, um, you know, because my runnings weren't too low at the end, I'm pretty confident that collecting the full 11 gallons did the trick. And once I, you know, once I'm done with the boils on all three pots, then I then I could slowly pour each one to prevent hot side aeration even though that's kind of a, a debate nowadays whether there is hot side aeration on a homebrew scale uh, but I'll slowly pour the other two pots it in and mix it in uh, mix them together and uh, towards the end of the boil or at the end of the boils as I said um, and then once I cool the wort down I'll be able to get an accurate post boil gravity and see if I need a top up or not based on the you know the smaller pots not having to boil off it with such so much power. All right, guys. So we're here for the last hop drop. You know, again using my bitter nesters pint glass to weigh out the hops. So this is an, a little over an ounce of tetanang going in with five minutes left in the bigger boil. All right, guys. So as you see here down here, I have my two fermenters with the split the batch. I ended up collecting about like almost a little over half a gallon extra into the three gallon the batch which is in my five gallon better bottle and I wanted to give enough headspace for the active uh, half a wise in the yeast so but I do have the other one right at the five gallon mark so we're exactly where I wanted it to so what I ended up doing was I took a gravity reading as it was cooling down and it was at 1060 and I'm like I was, you know, annoyed, you know, so I saw that I got better efficiency than I thought So with 11 gallons of wort collected. So what I did was I went on Beersmith and I used a dilution tool and it said to add 0.85 of a gallon based on the fact that I thought I had about 8 and 3 quarter gallons in the kettle. And really I had a little less than that because when I added it, added in the water and gave it a little stir, it, was, it got it down to instead of 10.50, or 1054 got down to more 1052 which is still perfectly in the range for the style and instead of being like 5.4 or 5.5 percent ABV if it gets down to 1012 it'll be 5.2 which is still a perfect summer beer so a fifth of a percent of alcohol you're not really taste it anyway 
So in the fermenters, obviously it looks less dark red, but I took a little bit with my with my beer thief to show you uh, because in this because if you look at it here in the light, it's more Hefeweizen in color. It's a nice pale straw Hefeweizen color. Um, so because the only um, the only malt that's giving it color is is the aromatic malt, and otherwise white wheat and, uh, and pilsner malt are pretty light and low upon. So, um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pitch the starter that I have, the liter and a half starter I have, into this one, and then I have another smack pack for this one. But I think what I'm going to do is make a small starter for it just to get the yeast active and then pitch it tomorrow morning and keep it cool overnight in the swamp cooler method um, and then go from there. So before I pitch that, I don't think I need to, sh maybe I'll show you pitching these, but I don't think I need to. What I did with my firm chamber, as you see now it's empty, um, is because it had my lactose saison or my tart tense saison in there and since it has lacto, I didn't want to risk infection so I sprayed some bleach spray in there and I wiped it down. Um, to make sure that it didn't get infected, and now it's sitting over here um, in my hallway, um, you know, just aging and uh, you know, waiting for me to decide whether I'm going to add saison yeast or bread, which I picked up this week. So. All right, guys, so it's time to end this video with uh, my usual fermentation update or my post brew day fermentation update. So the yeast has been pitched into both the three and a half gallon batch and the five gallon batch I should have a little over five gallons obviously because I added a liter and a half starter to it um, but both are fermenting nicely so I, as I said previously I pitched the yeast into the five gallon batch in my firm chamber right away um, last night and then I made a small like three quarters of a liter starter the smack pack that my wife picked up for me uh, and that for the three gallon three and a half gallon batch and I pitched that this morning um, after it had been on the on the stir plate for about eight or nine hours uh, just to get it you know going and nice and hungry so as you see here I have the three and a half gallon batch which I've had to use the swamp cooler method because obviously I only have as you know I only have room for one fermenter in there in my chamber from fridge so as you see here, I have the water bottles in here and a tub of water, and uh, it's fermenting nicely. Weird thing is though, at about almost the nine hour mark since I pitched, uh, yeah, eight hour mark I should say actually since I pitched, I pitched around 8 a.m., um, it's bubbling nicely, but the Krausen, as you see, is like not fully covering the top, so I really don't feel that it's at like full speed just yet, but... Um, I do have one of those, you know, stick-on thermometers on the carboy, so we'll try to lift up the T-shirt uh, for uh, so you could so I could show you it. So I don't know if you could how well you could see that, but it's fermenting at about 66 degrees, 66, 68, which is lower than my uh, my other one, which I'm keeping between 62 and 64, uh, but I can't really dial it in on that one as well. But as long as I can keep it, you know, in that range during most of pr during the first few days, which is the most important days of primary fermentation, then we shouldn't have any issues. Um, so uh, down here, so we'll open up the main batch or the bigger batch um, and um, as you see you might be asking you know isn't it a Hefeweizen yeast isn't it supposed to be going crazy and making a big mess but I did put quite a bit of firm cap S in both batches to prevent that from happening so uh, so as you see it has a nice healthy you know, Krausen on top, but it's not, it uh, didn't even get up and into the blow off tube uh, because of uh, because of the firm cap S. 
So again, I'm keeping it at 62 to 64 for now, and um, and it should uh, for, continue fermenting nicely at that temperature. And I should note that I got that 62 to 64 range um, from Jamil Zainashev uh, from Brewing Classic Styles. He says that he has been brewing Hefeweizens over the years, and you know, found someone told him to try 62. And uh, and he found that that was an ideal temperature. So for me, who has to keep it at a range in my chamber, you know, between 62 and 64, or 17 and 18 Celsius, um, which, if you want to know officially, is 62.6 to 64.4 Fahrenheit. So uh, in that range, I can keep it around the ideal temperature of Jamil. And one last thing, actually, a friend of mine gave me, uh, gifted me this Sankey keg connection uh, because he's building a keezer and, and has killed two mini fridges in the process. So he had a keg that he got of Guinness Blonde um, and uh, he couldn't, he didn't have anywhere to store it. So I had the extra room. So I'm storing it for him now, but it's cool. So when, if I ever decide to put a Sankey line in, I'll have the connection for a Sankey Sixtal. So I uh, hope I didn't ramble on too much, uh, but uh, I'm going to go back into my living room here, onto my computer, and uh, finishing, finish editing this for you guys. So happy Homebrew Wednesday, and cheers.